Welcome back. This is Rachel Georges, the artist behind Gorgeous Mixed Media. Today I'm sharing with you my art haul and I'm going to test out some new products I've never used before. I personally love trying out new supplies. It always is exciting for me to try something new I've never tried before and it just restores my enthusiasm for creating. I always get my supplies from Jerry's Artorama. They always have really good deals. Most of the time their prices can't be beat. First I have the Strathmore Journal for Watercolor. It's 140 pound paper, 300 GSM, and I'm curious how the paper will hold up compared to like my normal Fabriano paper that I've been using. Um, my goal is to do more watercolor studies in my journal and avoid, you know, experimental pieces on my really expensive watercolor paper. So you can see the pages are really thick. They have a nice texture and feel to them. So I'm excited uh, to try this paper out and, and see how it goes. Then I bought the Faber-Castell 9000 graphite pencils, which came with a pencil bag and an eraser and a sharpener. I'd like to really try to hone my sketching skills a little bit this year. It's been a while since I've done much practice drawing and uh, so it's always a good thing to practice. I also ordered some Schmincke watercolors. This one is Shire Blue. Uh, these are actually, they're super granulating. I ordered the Silver Black Velvet watercolor brushes from series 3000S. Um, so I got the round number 6, 8, and 12. I also purchased the 3007S script number 1. And the reason why is the paint finish on my Creative Mark brushes started cracking and flaking off, which is terribly annoying. Uh, the bristles themselves are still okay, but I wanted to try some more expensive brushes and see if performance wise I notice a huge difference and uh, hopefully these brush handles will hold up better uh, they already I can just tell by the feel of them that they feel better this is the Schmincke desert green also super granulating this is the Faber Castell need eraser I needed something to lighten my pencil lines so I'm excited to try that out I also ordered this masking fluid by Daniel Smith. Additionally, I purchased the Pinata Alcohol Ink Opal Color. I've never tried this one before, so I'm excited to check it out. Um, and I'm restocking my silver, which I've used many times. This is a catalyst wedge used to move and push paint, and I wanted to do some fun play with this and my high float paints in the very near future. Um, and then I have the Pearl Pinata Alcohol Ink. And I ordered this Tundra Violet Watercolor by Schmincke, also super granulating. Jerry's also sent me a free dot card uh, to try out some additional Schmincke colors. So I'm excited to see those in person. It's hard to judge by a picture what you're getting. And these colors are very expensive. When deciding what to order, I usually only order what I know I'm going to use. So we'll check those out. Of course, I had to order some additional pouring medium from Liquitex. I want to do some recipe experimentation for my next fluid art video. So that's coming soon. I'm just digging into some of these supplies. And here's the eraser that came with the pencil set. I do have just a few more things that I purchased outside of Jerry's. Um, I picked up this ceramic plate from Walmart actually. I paid $2 for one, so of course I had to get two. I thought these would be great as a watercolor palette. I also picked up these Micron pens from Michaels. I thought they would be great for some mixed media pieces. The ink is waterproof and archival. Lastly, I also picked up these jelly roll pens from Michaels. I picked up a white and a sort of metallic gold or bronze. The company that makes these is called Sakura. 
I believe I'm saying that right. And their website says these are archival, waterproof, and fade resistant. So I'm hoping to also incorporate these in some of my mixed media pieces. Let's get into testing out some of these supplies. I'll save the catalyst and the new alcohol ink for another time. But firstly, I'm going to try these graphite pencils. And let me apologize, I didn't realize I had set my camera up so poorly. I know it's hard to make out the writing, but I will do a, a good zoomed in shot um, at the end so you can see up close what those marks look like. Uh, these pencils don't require much pressure, just you know, straight off the bat, I can tell uh, that they glide smoothly over the paper. My set had included a B, 2B through 8B, HB, H, 2H, and F. And I believe that's just the, you know, the hardness level of the graphite. The 7B and the 8B were the softest and also the darkest. I think the 2H or the H might be more ideal for light sketches. Um, I'm hoping to do just some graphite drawings with these as well. It's been a really long time since I've just done any, you know, traditional drawing of any sort. So I feel like it would be fun to kind of try to get back in and, and hone those skills. Um, I My brain is like jumping from one thing to the next all the time. But I feel like sometimes you just got to mix it up to keep it fresh and, you know, just stay excited about whatever it is you're working on. So I don't know how much of that I'll actually share. It's hard to tell what my following base actually wants to see. I think for the most part, you guys like to see my experimental paintings. But if there's some interest for that, you know, let me know and I'll certainly share some of that as well. Side note, I know that my hands look terribly gross right now. Um, those are just healing kitty scratches. So he's getting better. He's getting less rambunctious. So my hands are healing. Hopefully um, I won't have mangled hands for the next video. So I ended up ordering sizes 0.3 millimeter, 0.2 millimeter, and 0.5 millimeter in these micron pins and I think I'll probably use the 0.3 and the 0.5 the most um, just because of you know how nice they are to kind of draw with um, I think they'll be good liner pins for some work I don't traditionally do a lot of lining of my paintings but it might be fun to try something new Here's the moment I've been waiting for, which is to swatch these new Schmincke watercolors. The first one is the Shire Blue, and interestingly, I can actually feel the texture in the paint. The paint is not as smooth as other tube paints that I've used, like the Daniel Smith or the Windsor & Newton. Um, so you can feel kind of the grit of this watercolor. I just absolutely love this color. I'm always a lover of the blues and, and the bluish greens. So it just first impressions, it's a really pretty color. I can't wait to use it. Now this one is the desert green. It's a very dark color and I found it really interesting that as these start to dry, the, the other pigments within these paints really start to show themselves. So that was another fun kind of discovery with these super granulating paints.
this is the violet tundra i especially love how you know initially it looks it looks like a really dark purple almost like a eggplant color but as it's drying you can see kind of orangish pigments start to appear Now I'm testing out the masking fluid from Daniel Smith. When you take off the lid, it comes sealed. You're supposed to cut off the tip and add this plastic applicator to make fine lines. Uh, for me, the tip slid off and it was just a mess. I don't know if I cut too much off, but I could not keep that applicator on. So I decided to just use a really old brush and um, I just kind of cut some of, cut it down short and I'm using that brush just to apply that masking fluid and it's working much better for me. Um, so I'll try the applicator again later and see if maybe it was just user error, but this is what I went with. <laughs> I will say that it is kind of difficult to see where you're putting your masking fluid because it's white. Uh, so if you're using a white paper, it, it's gonna be a little more difficult to see exactly where those lines are going it does become more visible as it's drying. I, I will probably check out another one later that has a tint to it, a slightly greenish or blue tint. I will say that fl the fluid dried fairly quickly within about 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the different silver black velvet watercolor brushes. So I'm gonna go with the 12 first. Right off the bat, I can tell you that these brushes do feel better to hold. Uh, they're a little bit wider in the handle. And I do love the amount of water that these brushes can hold. You can really load them up and uh, put some heavy washes on your paper. This is the number eight. I feel like the number eight and the number six are going to be pretty versatile brushes. I imagine I'll be using these more uh, than anything else. Uh, they have really nice fine tips. Even on the number 12, the tip's pretty fine. So it's going to be nice for getting into those small corners and uh, hopefully it'll help avoid, you know, putting paint where I don't want it. And then here is the number six. So I, I expect that I'll be using the six and the eight for more of the detailed sections of, of my paintings, really getting in there with fine details. Not to say that these will completely replace, you know, my existing detail brushes. I, I have some synthetic detail brushes that I use when I don't want the paint to kind of go running all over the place. Uh, but I, I think that between all of these, I'll, I'll set myself up for some nice work. Lastly, this is the number one script. And this holds a lot of paint. So it's great because you don't have to continuously dip your brush into the paint which is important, especially when you're trying to create like line details. Now I've been burning to try these other colors from Schmincke. So on this dot card, there is some of their best sellers and then they included some of their super granulating colors. So there are a few on here that I didn't order, which I'm excited to see. I really love this cobalt turquoise color. 
I will say that some of these colors are easier to rehydrate than others and maybe that's just an issue with the age of the dot card I, I really don't know but some of the colors were much easier to hydrate and, and you can see that here I'm really trying to rub into that transparent orange to get it to come up and it just doesn't really want to hydrate as well but these colors are beautiful they're incredibly highly pigmented colors I'm definitely going to end up getting this cobalt turquoise color in in the future though for sure I wasn't super impressed with this Shire green color. It's very light and uh, translucent, so probably not the color for me, but maybe it's great for somebody else. And then I did really like this brown color. I think I'm gonna add that one later on as well. So of course, if you don't have the budget to you know, buy a whole bunch of different colors, then you know, just get your favorite primary colors. Obviously you can, you can mix your own browns and you can mix your own greens and oranges. And so here's just a close-up so you can see the name of those colors in case any of them jump out to you. Um, I do like the transparent orange. And I like the violets. Just, they're all really pretty colors, honestly. I'm just mixing some of these different mediums to see how they work and look together. I feel like that'll give me an idea of future creations and, you know, what I can pull off with pencil versus pen versus watercolor. I'm also checking to see how heavy handed I can go with these pencils and still be able to erase the marks underneath for like sketching purposes. This one's actually the 2B, and then I'm going over it with the 0.5 micron pen. And so I'd probably go with one of the harder graphites that leaves lighter lines normally if I was doing a sketch. But, you know, for the sake of exploration, I want to be thorough. This Knead Eraser by Faber-Castell works great for lightening my lines. So that's going to be nice for my sketches when I go too heavy handed, which I often do, just to lighten those up to make sure that they don't show through the watercolor. And then the other eraser that came with my pencil set does a really great job of removing those hard lines. But that being said, typically on, you know, watercolor paper, you want to avoid a whole bunch of excess rubbing because that can, you know, wear out your paper and then it won't absorb as, as much watercolor.
Now I want to see what these colors look like when they're mixed together. What kind of different shades we can come up with just mixing these three colors together. Which gives me an idea for another painting that I want to do very soon just using a very limited palette. For me, the metallic pen by Jelly Roll wasn't too impressive. I think I prefer my iridescent gold paint by Daniel Smith for detail embellishments. I do like the white pen though, uh, but I feel like this bronze didn't show up very good and maybe it's just the color. Um, I'll have to see if they have, you know, a more iridescent gold and see what that looks like. But um, I'll still probably use this from time to time, especially, you know, just for my watercolor journal. I will say that the white uh, looks really nice over colors. So a lot of times I'll have to go in with my bleed proof white watercolor to fix some highlights uh, usually because I'm too heavy-handed with watercolor but that's besides the point um, these might make for some really good highlights actually so also the the pens are really smooth they the ink comes out really smoothly uh, so these are great pens Now that the masking fluid is dry, we can take a look at how the fluid holds up. I'm doing a couple of layers because honestly, that's just how I paint. I usually use a lot of layers when I'm painting. So it needs to hold up under the stress of a lot of water. And it did great. Uh, I can't complain. Although I haven't used any other masking fluids yet, so I don't have a lot to compare it to. But for me, this dried quickly and it was very easy to pull up. I have watched some reviews of some other masking fluids that were quite difficult to remove and I was literally able to just use the tip of my finger to rub and pull up that masking fluid. Mm -hmm. So I would give it a, a four out of five stars for, for removability. Um, but it is difficult to see when you're applying it. So I think like I mentioned before, I probably will try another. I want to try the Shiminke, uh that has like a little bit of like a greenish tint and see if I like that better. It's probably better to remove the masking fluid with an eraser or a gloved hand because, you know, you're, you've got a lot of oil on your fingertips and that could break down the, the paint over time. So... But this was just a test, so that's why I did it this way. Well, that concludes the testing of these new supplies. I hope this video is helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like. And I always appreciate your comments. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you so much for joining. I hope you guys have a wonderful week.